Governor Ron DeSantis has officially ended his presidential bid, paving the way for former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley to square off in tomorrow's New Hampshire primary. Haley has received extensive backing from Wall Street over the course of her campaign. We spoke with IBM Vice Chair Gary Cohn about Wall Street support, and here's what he had to say. Wall Street, like most of the world, would like to hear a variety of opinions and how people would deal with the current situation that we're in. Because look, we're in a pretty tough environment in the world today, not just economically, but if you look at the geopolitical environment and you look at the political environment, we've got a lot of problems around the world. Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman joins us to set the scene. Hey, Rick, which candidate would be better, at least by Wall Street standards? I think Gary Cohn uh, was trying to say diplomatically, <laughs> Uh, we prefer somebody other than Trump, <laughs> but I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, so in terms of what markets might prefer, uh, keep in mind that Donald Trump wants to impose a 10 percent tax on almost all imports to the United States. Uh, I mean, if, if Trump were to get elected and actually do that, which he could do without uh, congressional legislation, I don't think markets would love that. Um, but the question, of course, is whether Donald Trump would be able to beat Joe Biden in the general election. Uh, Nikki Haley, not into uh, an imports tax, and she's more of an interventionist. Uh, get, you know, she's been, she has had a lot to say about trying to help Ukraine and be involved. Trump, more of an isolationist. So when Gary Cohn uh, talks about geopolitical risks, Trump w basically says, let's pull back from all that and let the world handle its own troubles and get out of it. And Rick, when we also heard from uh, Steve Schwartzman, uh, Blackstone's CEO out of Davos, Julie Hyman and uh, Brian Sazi had the chance to speak with him. And they asked him about what he needs to see in order to endorse a candidate. I want to play a quick bite of what we heard from Steve. I'd like to see, you know, what the public has to say, uh, you know, uh, with, with a number of shots on goal. Uh, Do you want to see what the courts have to say as well? Is that going to be important? I, I think that's a separate issue. And Ricky also went on to say that there are there are always uncertainties in all U.S. elections. This one may have more than others. My question to you, though, is as we look ahead to New Hampshire, if Haley does win, how much is that really going to alter the narrative of this race? It would be a big surprise if Nikki Haley won in uh, in uh, New Hampshire. I almost said South Carolina. Sorry, that's <laughs> that comes next. Um, and, you know, she's down by 11 or 12 points. And um, if, if she does win in New Hampshire, um, you know, she could attract more uh, funding and um, maybe, uh, <laughs> you know, create the possibility that somebody other than Trump could win. Maybe Trump's legal problems would work against him. But this is a long shot for Nikki Haley. Let's let's be clear about this. So there's some tension and some drama in the race right now, but I'm not sure that is going to be the case after Tuesday. Yeah, certainly polls showing that Trump has a wide lead over Haley in the New Hampshire primary. All right, Rick, thanks so much for breaking that down for us. See you guys.